we're gonna make sauerkraut. <laughs> and good afternoon. My name is Brooklyn and here in northern Alberta, Canada, we are in the heat of cheese making season on the Beagle Farm and as you may have already guessed, uh, sauerkraut making season. For the last number of years, I've been the one in charge of heading up the sauerkraut operation. I'm sure many of you are already aware that a healthy gut is one of the most important aspects of healthy body function healthy hormone balance, as well as good dental health. And this is precisely why we love to make lacto-fermented sauerkraut. It's a cheap and delicious way to spruce up your microbiome and get your vitamin C in the dark of winter and prevent scurvy. So first off, the basis of the recipe that I use is from the wonderful book Nourishing Traditions by Sally Fallon Morell. We highly recommend her material and have been using a lot of her recipes for years now. Um, you can find the basic recipe on page 92 for her lacto-fermented sauerkraut and that is what we are going to be basing our recipe on today. See how the water droplets are just like little teardrops underneath the uh, peels of the cabbage. It's just beautiful, all that moisture. Overall, this cabbage looks really, really nice and clean. Make sure that if there are any small pieces of dirt, just take them out or give your cabbage a quick rinse so that there isn't a chance of bacteria getting into your lacto-fermented sauerkraut and ruining the batch. But if it's nice and clean, I don't see that there's any reason to worry too much about rinsing it off. Among all the vegetables that one can conserve through lacto-fermentation, cabbage has been man's preferred choice. Here is how it was prepared in the olden days, according to Anna Nilsson. As children, we always looked forward to the day they made sauerkraut. Two men seated themselves face to face and, straddling a barrel, held between them a large tool for shredding the cabbage. The little box that the cabbage fell into went back and forth between them to the rhythm of a song they chanted. Then arrived the moment that all of us children were waiting for. When they sang the refrain, one of the men would jump nimbly into the cask, scatter a handful of salt over the grated cabbage, and stamp down with his feet. But sauerkraut was known at a much more ancient time. In China, they fermented cabbage 6,000 years ago. In ancient Rome, sauerkraut had a reputation as a food that was easy to digest. Even at that period, there were already two known methods for lacto-fermenting vegetables according to descriptions given by Pliny about 50 BC. The first method consisted in mashing the shredded cabbage in great earthenware containers, which were then hermetically sealed. The second consisted of mixing different vegetables, including wild herbs, and covering them with a solution of salt water. This mixture was called compisture, or mixture. Tiberius always carried a barrel of sauerkraut with him during his long voyages to the Middle East because the Romans knew that the lactic acid it contained protected them from intestinal infections. Nourishing Traditions, page 93. So our next step is adding the salt. Just ensure that it is a high quality salt and nothing like iodized or table salt. What we have found good success with is just a high quality pink Himalayan salt. And we're gonna just take three tablespoons of that and sprinkle it over top of our cabbage, which is uh, 10 pounds of cabbage. 
Later on, this may be adjusted according to taste, but we're going to start off with that. Okay, and our next step is to add the Floridanica whey. And if you are interested in learning how to make Floridanica whey, you can just go to our link above and see how to make bel pernol and the way that comes from that particular cheese culture can be used for making your sauerkraut. And if you did choose to not use goat whey or cow whey from your cheese making, you could also just use water or if your cabbage is juicy enough and creates enough of its own brine with the salt, then you may not even need to use any water at all. For 10 pounds of cabbage, I like to do eight tablespoons. Now we're going to take our wooden sauerkraut pounder and start releasing some of the juices. And so I'll just continue doing this for approximately one to two minutes until I feel satisfied that the juices are getting nicely released. And the next step is to do another 10 pounds. Whole, pro whole process over again and layer several recipes on top of each other. So I will see you back in probably a half an hour. Okay, so now we have 30 pounds of cabbage in our great big pot and basically what I did is three of the recipes that I showed you already and now we're gonna take our wooden hammer and we're gonna hammer it for about 10 minutes or so until all the good juices are released and we have a really nice brine before we stuff it into cork jar sealers. sample it. My siblings, a whole bunch of them were in here already sampling the cabbage and the croat. And I would say that's very much like sweet croat. <laughs> As time goes on, it'll get, it'll get to be sour. <laughs> So right now is the time where you taste test your cabbage, your sauerkraut, and see if it tastes just right and if you need to or not, add a little bit of extra salt or a little bit of extra whey to make it just perfect. From what I'm tasting, it's just right. sauerkraut about an inch away from the top of the jar. It's really nice to have all of this beautiful liquid at the top. Okay, so this is our sauerkraut for today. Out of about nine cabbages, we shredded 30 pounds, and each quart has approximately just under two pounds of cabbage and we have 14 quarts and these Adam's peanut butter jars may be a little bit larger I'm not sure so we'll just wipe the mouths of the jars to clean them before we put the lid on and one quick thing take a piece of wax paper before we place the lid on to inhibit any contact of metal from the lid into the sauerkraut so like so and you don't actually want to 
close your lids overly tight. As your sauerkraut ages, it will increase in its vitamin C content. For example, one cup of lacto-fermented sauerkraut will have 20 times more vitamin C than one cup of regular cabbage. So eat your sauerkraut with a big smile. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is leave my sauerkraut jars out on the counter at room temperature. And after about three days, once it started to bubble and ferment, I'm going to put it out in the cold storage area. During those three days, what I'll do is have like a towel or a cookie sheet underneath my jars to catch any kind of drips or bubbling over that may happen during the fermentation process. So that is how I like to make our sauerkraut. And I really hope that this video has blessed you and maybe encourage you to try sauerkraut if you haven't yet and uh, maybe just been an informative video or a fun video for you if you are already making sauerkraut and one more thing this is going to the cow and it's going to be made into white kraut <laughs> see you next time Ta -da.